Okay, uh, I switched to a three-quarter four flute here, so it doesn't have so much spring. And I'm just trying to get it so it's, it's not tapered. This stuff is works a lot. All right, now the space is approximately five and one eighth, so I'm going to make it two and nine sixteenths is half. So I got a mark in the center, and uh, we're have to go with it. It doesn't matter that much, it, but I want to try to get as close as I can. There's the mark, and I got to get something to put here. Block, block. I'll tell you one thing, this side's bigger, higher than that side. I wonder why that is. Huh. Well, better check that out. Two and three eighths, pretty close. That's just that this side's higher. <laughs> About that. Could be in the casting. Wouldn't be surprised. Holy mackerel! Look at the difference. Yeah. Let me see. Get, uh, 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 maybe something here. Something there. That's the sixteenth of an inch difference, one side to the other, but it's in the middle. I don't want to take any more off that. I got to see where I'm at this way. You know, working with castings is a little different. Oh, geez, oh man. On that side there, you got about a hundred thousandths. Hundred thousands, which makes sense because if you measure that, if you measure that with a scale. Where's my scale? Where's my scale. Measure this on this side. It's well, uh, five sixteenth, I guess. Pick it up. Number two here. Zero it out. Oh, that'll take ten. See what happens. Which you said a bigger end will make a difference. I had to use the smaller one at first. Let's see what we got. 
see where we're at tapering. We'll try that. Two fifteen. It's twenty thousandths taper. I can probably get that out by machining it back and forth. I'm not really worried about it that much. Two ten. Two ten. I gotta go to one oh one and an eighth. I mean five and an eighth, so there's five and an eighth right there. Let's see. Yeah. Twice through. cutting. It's not flexing as much. measure it. Should be about 40 thousandths on there. Okay, that does the, the end of the long end mill stuff. Milled the back of this because later on we're going to make a bracket to bolt into here. And that's what I use to move a locomotive. I have an angle bracket that I made up that bolts down to a board with wooden tracks. And that's all that holds the engine. You don't need all these bungee cords and gobbly goo and all that stuff. You don't need that. All you need is just a good angle plate that bolts heavily into the cradle, and that's the end of that story. It's done. And what I have to do now is put a shorter end mill, maybe half inch or something, and mill this area off right in here, because that's where an angle goes to hold to the back of the 
the back underneath the cab, there's a piece of steel there, and that holds the back of the cab floor, and then, of course, consequently the cab. And then that same end mill, i got to come up here and uh, do the top of this tongue that I did. Tongue on here, top of this. I used automatic feed on this one. Two flutes can run a little faster. I'm just taking a slight cut across there. You gotta have a a square to the face to everything else for that upright under the cab to sit squarely. So I might not machine all this because this is not really square with us is lower at this point. I just do it an inch wide there. More than likely that's where the other one done same way. I think while I'm at it, I'll skim off that too, where the bolt goes. Cutting more down this end. That's the way it is. Looks pretty flat across here. It's just a pattern. Old pattern. I know that uh, Little Engines redid it, but still could have been twisted a little bit. These thin pieces of wood go down there. I don't think it's on a match plate, and it twists. And over the years, it warps. I got the uh, holes drilled back here for the cab support. I got the hole drilled for the draw bar, 3 8 a little bit over, so it goes in easy. You don't want to be fighting it. And uh, I milled out, you can't see it maybe here in a picture, but slots here, similar to this is the aluminum piece that broke. Put that slot in there so the brake hanger can go in, pain in the neck. So probably wired than it needs to be, but you got to use a long 3 8 end mill is what I used, a two fluter I had. I had a two fluter end mill, use that. Anyway, I'm tapping the holes down, the point is that you use the center here. Now this thing is not level, so you can't, you can't use it on a, you can't use it on a, on that surface there. Tap it, so you got to do them by hand. Of course, this is the last, the last operation. You don't have to be all the way down because it's only three little short screws. And uh, I use the center in here as a little center in the tapping wrench. And it goes in real easy. All right, now move over to the center. According to the readout, it'll be zero. That's a centerpiece. There's zero, close enough for rock and roll. I'm down on that. So a goo juice. Put a little pressure, light pressure on this. You follow it. You can feel it. You don't want to put too much pressure. You're not drilling a hole. Just keeping that thing steady. You get down so far, it's not going to wander off anymore. You can go by hand. 
by without without this without the the quill. That's probably close enough. And careful. I you I put a supposed to be 136 thousandths drill tap drill size for 832. I used a 139, a little bit bigger, because you got plenty of threads. It's not holding on anything important. No tension on it. Go down. Do you feel it tight? That's that's it right there at the bottom. If I had to go deeper, I could put a, a bottom tap in and go deeper. And this is the last operation, last hole coming up. Then I got to flip it over. I'm hoping to get it at least being able to install it in there today to make it see how it looks. I think I'll be able to do that. And then the machine more, the two pads here, and the pad underneath here. And then one other hole. Okay, anyway, come over to two inches and a sixteenth. One, two, 63, 62 is good enough. Perfect. Close enough for rock and roll. Okay. We used to say that when we played in the band. We tuned, we tuned our guitars. Ah, that's close enough for rock and roll. And then one of my workers, Chris Sandville, God bless him, Good guy, English, Manchester, England. Flew uh, Spitfires during World War II. Worked for me. Never made a mistake. Seven years. Excellent machinist. Excellent machinist. I think he was trained as a, he wasn't really trained as a machinist, but he was a draftsman. And he did machine work too. That's it at the bottom. I can hear it starting to squeak. All right. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, three hat toes are tapped, everything good. Put the tap away, right here is close enough. I got another tap in here right here. This was the ratchet one. It's ratcheting, and it goes straight. Good tap, good tap and head. I'd like to have a few more of those bigger ones. All right, that's it for here. Okay, now we're going to flip it over and do the other side, and uh, it's coming together.